Hello, I'm Bishop Susan Johnson from the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. Last November, I was one of four of our delegation who had the opportunity to go to Gaza. Although I've been in the West Bank about 20 times, it was my first time being in Gaza, and I was horrified by what I saw and what I learned. This year, the population in Gaza, a very small um, geographical area, will top um, 2 million. 40% of the population is unemployed, 62% of the population is 15 to 29 years old. So you know what that does on youth to have that high incidence of unemployment. 80% of the population at least is on partial, um, at least partial dependence on international aid. So that gives you a sign of the poverty in the region. There's problems with all kinds of infrastructure. The electricity is controlled by Israel and is turned on and off. They only get a few hours a day. Fuel to run generators is expensive and diesel fumes um, contribute to the, the air pollution in the region. Uh, the sewer systems are inoperable. Raw sewage is being um, dumped into the Mediterranean. There is a freshwater, or there was a freshwater aquifer under Gaza, but it has been overpumped in competition between the Gazans and the Israelis, and is now 96% salinated and undrinkable. People buy water, um, but the water is not always safe that they buy. And in the end, it's poor people who can afford the least who end up drinking unsafe water. This polluted water, the salinated water, has led to a lot of waterborne diseases and a very high incidence in, uh, ki of kidney failure in the population due, of course, to the salination in the water. The schools are also overcrowded. They are running three shifts a day, but of course that means a very short school day for every child, not enough education. We saw great work being done by churches and NGOs, but there is not enough work to take care of misery in that place. I think one of the moments that made the greatest impression on me is when we were visiting a, social, a psychosocial program with 11-year-old girls. We saw them going through singing and dancing and playing, and they looked like happy little campers. And then we realized that they have already in their lives gone through three incursions into Gaza. And that still, every time a rocket goes off, every time a bomb drops, those girls are re-traumatized, as is much of the population. Those young people will grow into adults moving forward, and I can't imagine the lifelong trauma that they're going to experience. My deepest concern is uh, about the future for Gazans, but also the future for those in the West Bank. Annexation will have the effect of continuing to take away land and making the land mass for Palestinians in the West Bank smaller and smaller, like it's happened in Gaza. It also means that the very best of locations, of resources, of arable land, of old um, producing all of um, um, uh, fields uh, are being taken away, all the resources. And it's going to mean increasing poverty into Palestine, increasing taking away of, of infrastructure and resources like electricity and water, which already affect the West Bank. And I worry that the West Bank in the end is going to be more and more like Gaza. It's time for us to intervene and advocate we need to ask the Israelis not to go ahead with annexation. We need to speak out to our government and to our elected members of parliament to take a stand and speak out for Palestinian people at this time. Thanks very much for your participation in, in this webinar. Thanks very much for helping us work to keep peace with justice between Israel and Palestine. God bless you.